Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and welcome to my 2013 video series on using Google Calendar. You may know me from the video series that I've done on Gmail here in 2013 or the one that I've done on Google Drive here in 2013. I will link both of those video series in the description of this video here on YouTube. But this video is part one of my multi-part series on Google Calendar, and it's going to serve as an introduction to Google Calendar and as an overview of the user interface. Uh, so stay tuned for more videos in the series that will be coming up here in the next couple weeks. I hope it helps, and enjoy, everyone. Okay, so here I am in my Google account, and I started here in Gmail because I wanted to show you that the easiest way to access Google Calendar is to go to the very top of your screen when you're in any Google service, including Gmail, and click on Calendar in the black bar. You'll notice when I do that, it opens up in a new tab, and I'm now in Google Calendar. Before we really jump right in and get started actually working with events here in Google Calendar, I'd like to mention a couple of the primary features of Google Calendar. One is the ability to view multiple calendars at once, and two is the ability to share calendars. So I can have multiple calendars of my own, and those calendars are going to be listed down here in the My Calendars section. Now on your computer, you might have to click this little triangle to the left of My Calendars to get it to drop down. And when you do that, Starting out, unless you've already created some other calendars, you should just have two calendars listed there, one with your name and the other that says tasks. Now, at the same time, other people can share calendars with you. So maybe you have a coworker or a spouse and you want to have a calendar of their schedule. They can create their own calendar and then share it with you and it will be listed here under other calendars. So you can see right now all I have is my contacts, birthdays, and U.S. holidays. But if somebody else had shared a calendar with me, it would be showing up here in other calendars. Now also notice that to the left of these calendars, there's a little color associated with the calendar. And when I click on it, that color disappears. This is how we can hide and show events here in Google Calendar. So I'm going to create an entire video on creating events, which will show you how to do reminders, how to create repeating events, and that sort of thing. But I am just going to create a quick event here starting out just so I can use it as an example. So I've got an event that I created called Test Event. It was on Monday, August 19th. It's a little grayed out because that date is already over. So if this event had not yet occurred, it would be a little bit brighter on my screen. But notice that when I click on my calendar, Anton Alexander over here in the left, to hide events from that calendar, the event disappears. So this is really useful if you've got five or ten calendars and you want to view all the information on those calendars, but you might not be able to view them all at once. Um, you can just display one calendar, take a look at the events, then display the next calendar, or maybe only two calendars at once. It's really, really helpful. You can customize completely how this is overlaid. So you know, I can turn on and off these calendars down here. So let's actually see if there's an event. A, there should be a holiday. Okay, so you can see here in September, I've got Labor Day and Patriot Day. So I'm just going to create um, another event here on my personal calendar. I'm going to call it Test Event 2. So you can see now I have events from both the Anson Alexander calendar, and you can, you'll can you notice that the event that is blue over here is the same color as the color next to my calendar, Anson Alexander, and the events that are purple are the same color as the color next to the U.S. Holidays calendar. So if I were to just click on U.S. Holidays, you'll notice that events from that calendar disappear, and I'm now only viewing events from the Anson Alexander calendar. If I click back on U.S. Holidays, those events reappear. So that's how you can hide and show calendars here in Google Calendar. Now, talking about the user interface, I want to mention that uh, by default you start in the weekly view. And I'm going to go back to the week that we're currently in here. You'll notice that the days of the week go across the top and the times go down the left side of your screen. So that's kind of how you can view events. You'll notice that you can switch to different weeks up here at the top by using the arrow. So I can look at next week. I can take a look at the previous week, whichever view I'd like to use. And then over here to the right, we have different view options. So like I said, by default, it's the weekly view. And if you are using Google Calendar to schedule your tasks throughout each day, that's definitely the view that you're probably going to use the most. You'll take a look and you'll notice that the daily view, it's a lot of space with just a little bit of information. So I tend not to use the daily view. 
The monthly view is really, really useful if you're using Google Calendar for big events, when you have bills due, paydays, vacations, and you're not really focused on the individual events within each day. You're just looking at the big scope of things. You can take a look at the monthly view, and then up here at the top left, you can use these arrows to switch months like I did earlier. So I use the monthly view and weekly view a lot. If I go back to August, I'm going to click on the four-day view. This is similar to the weekly view. It always just shows the day you're on and then three days in the future. So again, if you are scheduling things out um, in hourly blocks throughout your day, the weekly view or the four-day view might be helpful for you. And then the last one is agenda view. Uh, this is basically just a bulleted list of the events that you've got going on in Google Calendar. So uh, again, if you are scheduling out your day in hourly blocks, this might also be a useful view. You could print this out and then you would have a list of everything that you've got going on. You can see I pretty much just have holidays on mine because I haven't added many events to this calendar yet. So I'm going to go back here to the weekly view. Um, if you want to create an event, you saw how I did it earlier. I just simply click on the day and time where I want the event to appear. And then it'll ask me what the event is and I could go ahead and I can enter a name for the event. I'm just going to say name goes here. Now, later on in this video series, we are actually going to click on the edit event button and I'm going to show you all of the different options you have when creating an event here in Google Calendar. You can invite guests to your event, you can create resource calendars so you can book rooms when you're creating an event. You can add descriptions, links, you can make it certain colors. You can do a whole bunch of stuff with events here in Google Calendar. So I'm going to dedicate an entire video to that. Later on in this video series, I'm also going to show you how you can sync these calendars with some of your mobile devices, how you can share calendars, how you can move events around. In that video where we go ahead and create an event, here in Google Calendar, I'm also going to show you how you can create a repeating event. Just starting out here, it's a good idea to kind of get familiar with this user interface. You've also got this mini calendar up here to the left, so I could just go through the months, months and days and click on whatever data that I'd like to go to, and it'll take me right to that week. If I don't like viewing this, I can go ahead and I can shrink that over here to the left. And uh, just so you're aware, I'm going to go into this in depth later on in this video series, but if I wanted to edit my Google Calendar settings, I could go to the very top right here to the gear icon where it says settings, and I could go to uh, the settings section in here. Um, there's also a lot of stuff in the calendar setup. Just like in Gmail, there are a bunch of labs to go along with Google Calendar that you can take a look on. Labs are basically add-ons that enhance the functionality of either Google Calendar or Gmail. So there's definitely some Google Calendar labs that I take advantage of. And I'm going to dedicate a video to that later on in this video series as well. Um, just like in Gmail, you can customize the display density of Google Calendar. So if I want a more compact view, I can press compact. You'll notice that things on the left are a little bit closer together. Um, stuff up here on the right is a little bit closer together. So if you've got a lot going on here in your Google Calendar, that's definitely a good idea to change that density over there. Another quick thing that I'd like to talk about is that I mentioned viewing multiple calendars at once. You can click on them to view events and click on them to hide events. Well, you'll notice that when you mouse over an individual calendar over here to the left, you have a little drop down that appears. And if you click on that, you could edit the settings for this individual calendar, which we're going to look at later on in this video series. We can create an event. But the main thing I wanted to show you is that you can change the color of that calendar. So if I change the color of this calendar to red, and I go back to, let's say, this week or today, you'll notice that the event on my calendar now has that color. So if I go and I change the color of US holidays to green, and I look at September, you'll notice that my holidays are now green, so I can definitely see a stark contrast between events on the Anson Alexander calendar, which are red, and the events on the US holidays calendar, which are green. So that's definitely very helpful when you've got a lot of calendars and you're trying to uh, decipher the information that's on each calendar here in Google Calendar. Um, so definitely take a look at this drop down. This is also where you could create a new calendar. So like I said, I actually have a personal and work calendar that I keep here in Google Calendar, but I keep them separate so that I can only display one if I need to, or I can just share my work calendar with somebody so they know what my schedule is without them seeing all of my personal events. 
So definitely play around here in the user interface. Go ahead and try creating some events and stay tuned for the next video in the series where I talk about creating events in detail here in Google Calendar. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.